yes, we do still have the El Camino and we're finally working on it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back finally working on the El Camino. So I'm not sure if I'll have an old picture to compare this to, but I, I mean, if you remember what this used to look like, it's a heck of a lot different now. I mean, Tanya is to thank for that because I sure as hell don't really care about looks, but she wanted to make sure that we started out with a nice clean engine bay. And so we took the time, masked everything off and uh, you know, prepped the the actual frame rails. I think we're only going to do this sort of look up front as far as like the black. Um, we're not going to paint the whole frame black going back. Um, more than likely it's going to be similar to what we did here with the bars. So everything up here is all cleared. Um, but yeah, obviously we did the, uh, it's like a satin black, I guess. She didn't want gloss or anything, but she wanted a little bit of a shine, not completely flat like the, you know, the body is here. I mean, I think it turned out really good, but, um, we cleared over these. This is gonna be kind of the, the theme of the rest of the cage where it's gonna just be, um, you know, we're gonna keep some of that weathering. You know, you can see the, the rust a little bit there. Well, all this is cleared over. So we sand it down to the point where it's like, you know, showing a little bit of weathering, but still, you know, looks uh, nice, not completely rusted. And then we clear it over so that it doesn't continue to rust, but we get that look. We're gonna do that throughout the cage as well. We still have to, sand a lot of this stuff down. Like this is all, you know, fresh rust. We left it all bare for a reason. And uh, we'll sand it down to the point where we actually like it and then we'll clear over it. We did that to the roof up here uh, when the cage was dropped down because we knew we weren't gonna be able to get to that uh, after that. But the bottom of the top of the cage and everything else, we still have to, to clear. So yeah, K member, same sort of thing. This is all cleared. Um, yeah, we like that look, so we wanted to make sure that it didn't, you know, get you know, more rusty and we didn't want it to look too clean. Far fancier than uh, what we mostly, or what I deal with most of the time. And uh, that's because it's Tonya's, so looks pretty good. But the part that I'm more excited about is, and it, and it kind of sucks because we got the car back and it had like, you know, the fenders on and we had the suspension in and everything and it was sitting on its own wheels and now it looks like we've taken a step back. but. Um, you know, same thing, rear ends hanging out. We got, you know, shocks hanging out, bars just dangling. Uh, cause we took the rear end out and, uh, took it to Nick's. But yeah, so here it is. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it out one handed, but, uh, yeah, here's the rear end. Excited to put it back into the car, all complete. These axles took forever to get. So I'm really excited about these. But we always, we always had like one little piece missing to be able to like complete the area. Well, for the rear end, it was definitely these axles. So we do have rear brakes for it. We are going to uh, steal the rear brakes off of the Civic's rear end. Um, they're just Explorer brakes, pretty standard. Um, so those will go on this. I hate to keep picking from the, uh, the Civic, but you know, we have the parts laying around. I can always get new ones for the Civic uh, in the near future, but we wanna to try to get this thing going as fast as possible. So anything we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and use. So in case uh, you guys didn't remember, or I'm not even sure if we covered it in a previous video, remember these fancy TRZ lowers um, for the rear end, uh, TRZ uh, anti-roll bar kit as well. This one's actually you know, a heck of a lot bigger than the one we had in Liam. Liam's I think was only like an inch, maybe? I don't know, it was super small. I didn't want it to be too stiff, but for this one, we want this whole thing um, to be pretty stiff. We don't want any roll going on. I'm not sure if I mentioned it on a previous video, but we did put uh, 355 gears in here. Liam used to be on a 355 uh, originally, and I think it actually was the better gear for the car. This is gonna be very similar as far as the amount of power that it's making, the turbo that's gonna be on it. It's the exact same converter. It's the exact same Hughes converter. So when Liam was on a 355, it had a much, much looser converter. And we thought we were running out of gear, but really we were just slipping through that converter like crazy. And so I'm not positive if, if we were to have put the Hughes converter on the 355 gears, uh, Liam ended up having a little bit too tall a gear in it. Um, we realized kind of toward the end because we went to the Hughes converter and uh, went up to a 340 something gear at the same time. And I think it was a little bit too tall. 
So how would it have been if we had the 355 in there um, with the used converter? We're gonna find out because that's gonna be the exact setup in the El Camino. Um, I think it probably is still gonna be a little bit too tall, but I don't know. I mean, the El Camino should make a little bit more power than Liam did, and uh, hopefully it's gonna be a little bit lighter. So maybe it'll be okay. It might be just right, but if, if we need to, we can always uh, do a gear change and go a little bit more. I, we're not gonna be like 411s or anything like that. We're just, we won't have the RPM to um, spin this motor. We're not gonna be spinning it that high to where we can do gearing like that. But I think we definitely go to like a 370 something. Uh, what are they, 373s or something like that. That might be kind of the sweet spot where we end up, but kind of have to test um, to see where that's gonna land. All right, so we'll get this thing put back into the car. Actually, before we put it back into the car, I think we're going to kind of follow the theme that we have on the front of the car. And uh, probably gonna paint the whole center section and uh, cover black. Uh, and then keep all these tubes that kind of weathered look, uh, keep a little bit of the rust on there and then clear it over. So all of this stuff that has that, you know, nice amount of rust, we're just gonna sand that down a little bit, clear over it and then the center housing will be black. So that'll kind of be the theme throughout the car. So I don't know, that uh, feels good to start kind of seeing how it's going to take shape. I'm assuming she's gonna to wanna to paint uh, the outside. Keep in mind, all we're doing with this thing, uh, I mean, we're using, we're using spray paint. Uh, we're not gonna go crazy with the body or anything. We can't put that kind of money into it. If somebody wants to help us out and do some like legit paint, by all means, but we're not gonna ask for it, that's for sure. I mean, just the little amount of paint that we've been doing, uh, we see how much effort and time and skill it takes to make things look nice. I don't have the patience. I think she wants it to look good, but we just don't have the patience or the budget to do so. So um, we will do the best we can with uh, what we're willing to put into it and make it look as as good as possible. I think she'll be happy with, with what we'll be able to put into it. But uh, yeah, so that'll be the next thing. We'll spruce that rear end up before we put it back in. And we also have a whole bunch of stuff under the car to do the same thing to. So like if you see these uh, these plates, um, oh, let me get a light. All right, it's kind of tough to, to see down here, but um, all of this stuff in the back, like that big old plate back there and all of the bars here that we can uh, get to pretty easily. The frame back here, uh, we're gonna give the same treatment uh, to this as we gave to the front bars. So sand it down, clear it, kind of save that nice uh, little bit of rust. So yeah, I'm excited to get moving on this thing. Uh, like I said, I think it's gonna roll pretty quick. Hopefully each weekend we'll have some kind of update on it, whether it's you know like new paint or new parts coming in. Uh, the parts that I'm dreading are doing the brakes on it uh, and probably wiring, which, uh, I mean, those are rapidly approaching. The very next thing that we do after we get the rear end in the car, uh, after painting it and everything, is probably get the motor and the trans into the car uh, and measure for the drive shaft so we can get that going. I don't know how long that's going to take. I know there's a lot of stuff that's on back order and, uh, you know, shipping times are outrageous. So we want to go ahead and start um, getting some of these things rolling while we move on other stuff. Uh, we have Liam's old aluminum drive shaft. I'm going to see if maybe we can repurpose that, send it back to the same guy that did that one with the new measurement, because I'm assuming it's going to have to be a little bit longer. And uh, hopefully we can use that, because that was a great drive shaft right up until the point where I bent it. But that'll be a cool point because, you know, we'll be able to have the freshly painted engine bay actually have an engine in it and kind of get an idea of what else we want to paint on the motor because uh, I'm assuming we're going to want to keep that kind of black theme, black or bare metal theme. And uh, yeah, it'll feel kind of good having the motor in there, although we're going to have to take it back out probably numerous times. But yeah, anyway, we're going to get back to work on this. So quick little video just to give you an update of what we're working on right now. Um, like, share, subscribe to all the usual stuff. And yeah, we'll see you with the El Camino soon.